Okay, what we want to do is talk about what this dispersion relation means. Um, and talk about it usually means, uh, you know, uh, graph it and that sort of thing. So let's say consider uh, transverse And sometimes we abbreviate electromagnetic by EM, too long to write it, you know, waves in a plasma. And again, remember, transverse means E is perpendicular to K. And this is our uh, dispersion relation for that, for those waves. And what's our dispersion diagram look like then for those waves? The dispersion diagram is a plot of omega versus k. Well, the first thing is that we, of course, got omega squared is equal to omega pe squared plus c squared k squared, or omega is equal to the square root of plus or minus, but I won't worry about the negative frequencies, it turns out. Um, so it's omega pe squared, square root of omega pe squared plus c squared k squared. Um, so at k goes to zero, okay, this gives us omega pe, so we'll have omega pe. But as k gets very large, then the omega pe squared will become negligible compared to c squared k squared. So there's going to be some asymptote here. Um, I'll draw myself a little uh, asymptote. And then our particular wave is going to have some character like this, something like that. Now, what's the phase velocity for such electromagnetic waves? Well, you remember the phase velocity was equal to the ratio of the frequency to K. Okay? And uh, so if I just take that in there, uh, I can show that this is then uh, omega over K, well, I can take out a C, and I can take in the K, and you can show that it's just C. I'm sorry, I'm going to get this mucked up. So it's C times the square root of 1 plus omega PE squared over C squared K squared. So let's uh, note that the slope of this line Okay, which is the asymptote, is C, the velocity of light. But the slope, so imagine that I was at some particular K. I was interested in some modes that have some particular K in the plasma. Then the phase velocity is the ratio of omega over K at that point. So that, phase, so that slope is the phase velocity. And does uh, that... Uh, well, actually, that's, let's note that's greater than the velocity of light if I have any plasma at all. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Phase velocity is okay. It carries no information. Okay? How about the group velocity, d omega dk? Well, the easy way to get the group velocity on these types of dispersion relations is take, just take the derivative of this at constant density. So you get 2 omega d omega is equal to 2 c k dk. And uh, you cancel out the twos. And then what you find is that the d omega by dk is equal to, well, I should have left myself with a c squared there, I guess, uh, a c squared divided by omega over k, or it's c squared divided by the phase velocity. Or I put that in and it becomes c divided by the square root of 1 plus omega pe squared over c squared k squared. And this is, this is the, then the group velocity, and this is less than the velocity of light, and so that's okay. We're transmitting information at less than the velocity of light. Now, geometrically, again, uh, the slope, the local tangency, okay, on this dispersion relation dispersion diagram is the, the slope of that line is the group velocity and you can see that indeed 
for all of these electron, electromag transverse electromagnetic waves in a plasma, the velocity of light may be the ultimate asymptote, but at any finite k, the phase velocity will be greater than the velocity of light, and the group velocity will be less than the velocity of light. You can see either by geometry or by mathematics, whichever way you want to do it. Okay, so let's, uh, so this is uh, now some discussion of just the dispersion diagram. Um, you remember when you talk about uh, electromagnetic waves propagating in something, you often talk about an index of refraction. You know, so I have a, a medium that has uh, glass or something like that or some dielectric medium. It always has an index of refraction. And what is that? So, and what, what is it for a plasma is the question. So let's talk about the index of refraction. And it turns out that that index of refraction is nothing other than CK over omega. Well, that actually is just C divided by the phase velocity. Okay. And just putting in what we had uh, determined before, this will be CK divided by um, the square root of uh, omega PE squared plus C squared K squared, or it's equal to 1 over um, the square root of 1 plus omega P E squared over C squared K squared. And that's actually less than 1. Now, usually when we make up, uh, oh well, um, due to the presence of the plasma, okay, if it was just a vacuum, no plasma, plasma density goes to 0, plasma, plasma frequency goes to 0, then we just get 1. We'd be in vacuum, index of refraction, refraction would be unity. Um, but another way of writing this, remember we had before that K was equal to, for transverse electromagnetic waves, square, uh, omega over C times the square root of epsilon hat over epsilon naught. And so it turns out, let's see, you, you, one can see that um, by we had this relationship that we could also have written our dispersion relation as k squared is equal to omega over c epsilon hat. Take the square root of that, and, you know, you get k is omega over c square root of epsilon hat over epsilon naught. So using that, um, so um, dispersion relation, um, we can then have that our index of refraction, just stick this in, um, just becomes the square root of epsilon hat over epsilon naught is a different way of looking at it. And again, that's less than 1 for omega PE squared does not equal 0. So what does that mean about waves propagating in a plasma compared to waves propagating through a lens or something like that? Well, usually with a lens, uh, okay, we have that the index of refraction is greater than 1. And so what happens is if you have a lens, uh, parallel waves come in, and they uh, actually get uh, focused a little bit, okay? Um, so they, they uh, so focus. On the other hand, with a plasma, so plasma lens, let me call it that way, you would have the index of refraction would be less than 1. So then if you had a plasma, I'll make him red. Okay. Then you have light waves come in, and they actually get defocused. Okay. So it's not a, a lens, it's a defocus. Okay. Now, uh, people have proposed, on the other hand, that if I had a plasma density, uh, a high density on the edges, okay, then you can actually refract back the other way and make yourself a regular lens. I'll come back to that in a moment. 
But the general idea is that plasma waves, okay, diverge in a medium. They, they tend to um, refract away as opposed to converge like a regular um, lens. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is um, what happens, we just uh, had a little sketch here of omega as a function of k, and the idea we had in mind was that uh, we were always going to have frequencies greater than the plasma frequency when we asked about these waves. What happens if I go along below the plasma frequency? So, you know, I got some plasma here, and, and I put some oscillator on the edge of it, and I uh, oscillate at some frequency, which is chosen by the oscillator, to be less than the plasma frequency. What happens then? Well, how about I got a little problem. Um, namely, I look at my dispersion relation. So let's say what happens if omega is less than omega PE or squared or, you know, any way I want to do that. Um, first off, I can, I can still sort of look at this dispersion relation. I would just have then that K squared um, or c squared k squared would be equal to omega pe squared minus omega squared. But now this would be a negative quantity. Okay, So I'll just write this as minus the absolute value of, uh, I don't want to write this which way, uh, omega squared minus omega pe squared. So I can take the square root, and I'll get that uh, ck will be equal to square root of minus 1 is i times the square root of the absolute value of omega squared minus omega pe squared. And actually, for good measure, I should have plus or minus i. So what this means is that when I have then my electric field goes like e to the i kx, my k is complex, and so what this really means is I get e to the minus x times the imaginary part of k. Or we might write it as e to the minus x over some distance, which I'll call delta. And that would delta would then be a exponentiation or damping distance. Okay? So delta is approximately equal to 1 over imaginary part of k. Uh, and that would be c divided by, okay, um, this uh, square root of uh, omega pe squared minus omega squared. And this is approximately equal to, in the limit that omega is much less than omega pe, just c over omega pe. And this is what is often referred to as the electromagnetic skin depth. And what does it mean? Well, it means sort of the, suppose I have some slab of plasma here, and I have some wave that comes propagating up to it, some electromagnetic wave, and it just dies off real quick, okay? It only propagates in a distance delta, an exponentiation distance, and just dies off. And what's happening? Well, again, the, the electrons are all moving around so as to shield out this wave and prevent it from propagating. But if the frequency were higher than the electron plasma frequency, then I could solve the original dispersion relation and waves would propagate in the plasma, but with a slightly different index of refraction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how big is delta? Well, it turns out if you take n sub e as about, uh, say, 10 to the 19th per, centimeter, per meter cube, typical plasma density, uh, laboratory plasmas around campus, it turns out this distance, c over omega pe, turns out to be about 0.2 centimeters or 2 millimeters. So it's a very, very 
small distance, let's say. So these are then some properties of electromagnetic waves. And now let's talk about some sort of applications of these uh, types of ideas. So. Um, the first one is that uh, since somehow the propagation of waves into a plasma is uh, dependent upon the plasma frequency and hence the plasma density, you could measure the plasma density by varying the frequency. So what you do is, oh, and I should say this is called cutoff. So uh, microwave cutoff, lack of propagation, uh, K goes to zero, and interferometer is the application here. Now, again, what you do is you consider a wave propagating into some plasma, and then some of it gets through, maybe. And so the first comment is, uh, if omega is less than omega PE, the wave is actually not transmitted. Okay, wave not transmitted. Some of it may get reflected if I have an inhomogeneity uh, transmitted. So, you know, I could just impose a wave on the edge of a plasma, and if it, you know, doesn't go through, then I could say, gosh, it, somehow or other that frequency was below the electron plasma frequency. But that would require a variable frequency transmitter. So that would be a little bit difficult to arrange. So what people really do is they arrange a phase synchronous circuit where they have one circuit through the plasma and one circuit around it, which is through vacuum then. Okay. And the idea is that the change in phase along the path through the plasma will give you uh, relative to that in vacuum will give you a phase shift. And this is so this is if you have omega greater than omega PE uh, and you have a microwave interferometer then. You interfere the signal that went through the plasma versus the one that went didn't go through the plasma. Interferometer. And the idea then is that the you remember, I'll have phases e to the i k x, but the k minus i omega t, but the, the omega is the same going both legs, but the k changes a little bit by having gone through the plasma. So the change in phase, remember this is what we call the phase phi, is then equal to the integral through the plasma of delta k, where delta k is the change in k by having gone through the plasma versus not going through the plasma. And uh, this is then an integral dl uh, omega over c square root of epsilon over epsilon naught minus 1. And if you sort of work this out in the limit of, remember this was uh, 1 minus omega pe squared over omega squared. And so this and omega PE squared pens drying up here. Omega PE squared is uh, n sub e e squared over m sub e epsilon naught. And so when you work all this out, what you find out is that it's um, minus the integral uh, dl omega PE squared over 2 omega. And this is then proportional to the integral dl of n e of l, which is the total, the phase shift of the two waves is then proportional to the line integral of the plasma density through the entire plasma. So this is sort of one very definite application of these electromagnetic waves. You just, you can either go below the plasma frequency and notice the place at which it stops transmitting hence the plasma is of that density inside. Or you can go to a higher frequency, and then the phase shift of the two, two lines gives you uh, the interferometer. Uh, the phase shift then gives you 
a proportionality to how much plasma density integrated over the cord there is between the uh, source and the detector. Another sort of interesting application is the ionosphere. Uh, when people first started transmitting radio waves at short wave frequency, here's the, the Earth, okay, uh, guy sitting here, and he found out that uh, lo and behold, sort of a third of the way around the Earth, um, he could actually transmit short wave signals up, okay, and they'd reflect off the ionosphere. And uh, you might wonder, well, how can you do that? And the answer is the ionosphere is, in fact, a plasma. Okay? And it turns out it's a plasma with a density of about 10 to the 12th per cubic meter. And so if we calculate that omega PE was then, you remember, 56 times the square root of NE, and so this is 56 times the square root of 10 to the 12th, and so this is 56 times 10 to the 6th, or it's approximately 6 times 10 to the 7th, and then the plasma frequency in cycles per second as opposed to radians per second would be omega PE over 2 pi, and this is approximately then, uh, sorry, uh, 10 to the 7th uh, cycles per second or hertz, or this is about 10 megahertz. And indeed, on a good day with good sunspots and so forth and so on, producing a little bit of plasma up here in the ionosphere in the early morning, turns out you can jump skip from here to Europe on 10 megacycles or even 14 megacycles or sometimes 21 megacycles, as any, I might say, ham radio operator would know. Okay, another sort of application, uh, you know, we have these, uh, we now shoot up into the, uh, around the Earth, various satellites. Uh, manned satellites, and they come back in, right? And so as these satellites come back in, turns out they create a real nice plasma around themselves, okay? And you ever heard about a communications blackout, okay? Well, what happens is that uh, their um, communications blackout of uh, satellites, uh, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. You know, they're real hot, and they, uh, and they uh, produce a lot of plasma right out in front of them. Um, turns out a typical sort of frequency that they transmit at is about 3 gigahertz, um, certain type of uh, microwave uh, radar-type frequencies. Um, and that's then, you know, 3 times 10 to the ninth. And you can find, so if I was sitting inside a satellite here and trying to transmit to Earth, I would have a little difficulty if I was trying to transmit below the plasma frequency of the uh, ionized gas around the satellite, right? And so you can estimate from this that the electron density must be greater than about 10 to the 17th per meter cubed. And that indeed is about what happens. And you can go to much higher frequencies, but, you know, uh, the plasma density actually gets up pretty high uh, right around the satellite. And you can, if you could go to very, very high free electron laser frequencies, you might be able to make it, but that's a little bit difficult. And you could avoid that communication blackout. So it's not too big a problem. Um, another application of this is uh, basically a difficulty in getting... Uh, or waves with omega less than omega PE to propagate in the plasma. Uh, namely, what you try to do is you choose um, choose waves with um, omega of order of the cyclotron frequency of electrons or ions so as to be able to propagate them in and we'll talk about with a magnetic field uh, later. And finally, my final sort of application comment is a plasma lens, as I made, mentioned before, is divergent in general, not convergent, because the index of refraction is less than one. And so what people do is they propose that suppose I made a 
a density profile as a function of x like this. So I have some density like this. Um, and then you propagate waves in here, and they'll bounce off of each side because the density is higher, and they just rattle around in between here, um, and they rattle up against these edges in some sense. So this is the basic story on electron plasma oscillations, electromagnetic form. We talked about electrostatic form last time. This time, electromagnetic. Next time, we'll put in a magnetic field, make it anisotropic, and somewhat more complicated, it turns out.